And now it's my big pleasure to introduce uh, Yu Sheng Zhen, um, who is um, going to, from the Westlake University in Hangzhou uh, in China, who's going to talk about microbiome and precision nutrition. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect, thank okay. you. Uh, thank you again, uh, Maria, for the introduction, and uh, thank you, Severina, for the invitation. And okay, thank, okay, thank, also thank uh, Jack for the very interesting talk. So today, uh, I'm talking about uh, my uh, recent uh, research in, at the Westlake University. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm Jason from Westlake University uh, School of Life Science. So today I will talk about uh, the topic of microbiome precision nutrition. As diet, of course, is very close related to our health and uh, in the interaction with uh, between diet and health, a microbiome and its metabolites play an essential role uh, to connect uh, both. And in terms of precision nutrition, microbiome is imp also important, uh, you know, uh, tool or, or uh, mediators help in in interpret how uh, diet affect our health. So uh, in terms of nutrition research, uh, although uh, molecular or, or animal model or some mechanism research is important, but uh, human research or cohort research are also very important, uh, which is, of course, human is different from animals. So uh, in ma ma many of the previous research on microbiome and the nutrition, focus on animal models or, or model system, which is great, uh, but in terms of really apply the nutrition and the uh, knowledge and uh, the interaction of uh, nutrition and microbiome uh, interaction, uh, to humans, we need a large scale uh, cohort study because you know the assessment of diet and uh, uh, different food, uh, the resolution is, is, is not very high. So we need a large scale uh, sample size to increase the resolution to get a clear picture of, of what uh, the role of diet on uh, microbiome for health. So uh, that's, that's, that's why in the past five years, the field of nutrient microbiome epidemiology emerged uh, that uh, is a field to uh, disentangle the interaction among diet, nutrition, and microbiome for human health, and also to interpret what happened uh, between, uh, what's, for example, what's the microbiome biome uh, metabolize uh, works uh, during this process of connection. Uh, so uh, take the cardiometabolic disease or health as an example. It is very closely related to uh, nutrition and also related to uh, microbiome. So how the nutrition diet affect or interplay uh, with the uh, the microbiome and its uh, functional metabolites or, or even the other functional um, proteomic sector and uh, then affect uh, eventually affect the cardiometabolic health is very important. First, uh, nutrition could serve as a tool. We know nutrition and, and, and the cardiometabolic health has a close relationship. So we, we can find out why, what is happening in the microbiome, whether it is causal, we can find some new biomarker discovery and uh, give some me mechanistic insight and also could uh, serve as an intervention target in the future. Could this eventually serve uh, to help pre precision prevention of cardiometabolic disease. So, uh, so we use a prospective uh, cohort study to investigate how the longitudinal change of diet and nutrition uh, associated with gut microbiome and how it eventually affects cardiometabolic health. So for both uh, aspects of nutrients to food and also to diet pattern, uh, we uh, want to investigate how the microbiome uh, could help serve to mediate the, the, the relationship of diet uh, with uh, the diabetes and the risk, re related risk factors. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, I will give an example of how we've identified some key biomarkers of this nutrient or diet or food group and how it connected with uh, diabetes and related risk factors. So these are uh, works from my PhD student and a postdocs in the past four years. So the cohort that we use is a, a cohort so called uh, Guangzhou Nutrition Health Study Cohort. So it started from uh, over 10 years ago. Now we have a 10, 12 years follow up. So around 4,000 4, people. So in the third around, uh, around 2015 uh, to uh, uh, around 2017, we collected uh, two samples from uh, 2,000 uh, participants among this cohort. And uh, many of the cohort uh, participants had uh, twice or, or twice a collection of, of two samples over four years. 
avocado we collect many uh, deep, deep phenotype of, of uh, uh, we collect FFQ and the deep other phenotypes. Uh, so uh, for the omega-6 story, so uh, originally we uh, want to investigate whether omega-3 or omega-6 are uh, associated with incident diabetes in Chinese population because uh, we're using the biomarkers or using the red blood cell biomarkers, so there no such study in Chinese population. Then uh, we found that omega-6 fatty acid biomarkers are so, uh, positive associated with incident diabetes, and then we check whether gut microbiome serves as a mediator, and we did find that omega-3 whether biomarkers or dietary uh, omega-3, uh, omega-6 fatty acid associated with uh, lower uh, microbiome alpha diversity. And uh, then we did a mediation analysis and found that this alpha diversity could mediate the positive association of omega-6 with diabetes. And for the omega-3 fatty acid, we didn't find a direct association of, of this fatty acid biomarkers we using of red blood cell with the gut microbiome or blood lipids, but we did find that uh, this uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acid biomarker interact with CD3, uh, CD36 uh, 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 genetic uh, GG allele uh, and uh, uh, this, this mutation. So uh, the, among this uh, gene GG allele carrier, uh, carriers, omega-3 uh, fatty acid are uh, associated with improve of uh, improved blood lipids, including triglycerides and, uh, and HDL. But among the other group uh, uh, of uh, gene carriers, there's no such relationship. Or, or similarly, in only in the GG allele carriers, uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acid have a positive association with the uh, microbiome alpha diversity, which is beneficial. And uh, but in the other genotype carriers, there's no such uh, uh, relationship. And uh, for each of these uh, relationships, we uh, do a discovery in our Guangzhou Nutrition Health Study, and then we validate uh, in another independent cohort study. So uh, for the uh, fruit and, uh, and the vegetable and the microbiome, we found that because we started this project three years ago. At that time, there's no uh, prospective uh, longitudinal study of how that uh, fruit and veg associated with future you know, microbiome uh, levels. And we found that in our discovery call and also replicate in the GGMP, which is another uh, Chinese uh, microbiome project of, uh, around uh, uh, 6,000 people. And then we found that the, the, there's a robust uh, fruit and the microbiota Association, then we create a fruit microbiota index using those changed uh, taxa level and find that this index uh, inversely associated with type 2 diabetes, both in the discovery cohort and also uh, independent replicate in this uh, independent cohort. So, this, this is a sample size for this two population. And then we further uh, link those uh, fruit microbiota index with the fecal metabolome and found that specific fecal metabolites associated with this uh, uh, fruit associated microbiota index and uh, to interpret how this index uh, potentially connected to the function output of uh, fecal microbiota and uh, connect then eventually connect type 2 diabetes. Uh, for the dairy, uh, in Chinese, the dairy consumption is relatively low, but even in such a low uh, intake level, we uh, using these 2,000 participants, we found that dairy is also uh, a beneficial associated with gut microbiota because we, we created the uh, microbiota index also uh, based on this dairy intake. And uh, this index is uh, beneficial associated with blood lipids, including triglycerides and HDL here. We can uh, we created the index uh, or biomarker uh, uh, score for total dairy for milk and also for this uh, overall uh, alpha diabetes intake. Both of these microbiota features are beneficial associated with these blood lipids levels. So uh, this is another reason uh, published in AGC and story that uh, we found that of, of all the diet diversity recommendation date back to many years ago that more diverse our food is uh, the more the much health more healthy. Uh, but there's uh, no study to really investigate how the diet diversity impacts our gut environment, uh, uh, gut microbiome environment. So uh, we set up this study also at the discovery cohort and at the revel revel validation cohort, and uh, we found uh, examine the 
uh, how the diet diversity overall and also for the specific food of group diversity associated with gut uh, uh, metabolome, gut microbiome, including 6 RNA uh, generated microbiome feature and the metagenome features. And uh, then link uh, the diet diversity with gut environment to host the metabolism. The validation is the China, China Health and Nutrition Survey also is around uh, uh, 2,000 participants. So what we found is that diet diversity, the more higher diet, diet diversity, the higher uh, uh, microbiome alpha diversity, uh, which is uh, valid in the discovery code, also, also in the and also in the validation cohort. So the diversity, uh, the, the fruit diversity is a really driven factors. Uh, you know, for those uh, relationship, those uh, discovery and the validation cohort. And then for specific gut genera, we found that it is two specific genera uh, in the uh, discovery cohort and in the validation cohort. So, so uh, both cohort we use in the, uh, you know, uh, twice um, collected uh, FFQ data. So which is a diet diet baseline <coughs> versus diet diet score versus four versus five. So we, we actually, uh, that's the change of the diet diversity. So uh, basically we found this, this uh, two uh, bacterial general are, are in positive associated with diet diversity. And then we checked the literature from this, these two bacteria are beneficially, uh, you know, uh, protective for the cardiac metabolic disease and anti-inflammatory effects. Then we uh, use mediation analysis to find that this stable DDS, which is the uh, diet diversity is very stable across uh, three years follow up, uh, is, is associated with uh, host metabolism. So this GDCA is a bioacid metab metabolized, it is mediated through the uh, fecal. Uh, we also with here we create a score called the fecal microbiota score and the fecal uh, metabolized uh, scores. So, uh, Recently, we also found that the, the uh, lifestyle uh, also interest with uh, diet here is tea uh, with for the uh, gut microbiome and uh, uh, for the diabetes risk. So, so, so in the two minutes. Office, two minutes left. Okay, so here we found that cross insomnia associated with. Uh, Low abundance or two microbiota also also filled with a bio acid, and eventually we found that these uh, bacteria are beneficially. Uh, uh, for this uh, cardiac metabolic this intervention, and also we did a mediation. Then we found that tea consumption could, uh, you know, uh, uh, could modulate the cause insomnia, disrupt the gut microbiota and the bile acid metabolism. So, in addition to the bacteria, we also uh, suggest that the gut microbiome or bile fungi is also important for uh, uh, for our metabolic health and uh, also uh, affected by diet. Here, we found that bacteria interact with fungi on insulin resistance, uh, resistance and uh, potentially through the short chain fatty acid uh, way. And the dairy is the most significant one. So, due to the time, I will very briefly introduce the individual level N01 trial. So, N01 basically is a within person uh, clinical trial, uh, which is a uh, one person trial. So, we recruit the, uh, so here we want to test whether high fat or, or high carb diet has effect on uh, gut microbiome or glycemic index and whether we can analyze the data or one, uh, one person at a time. So, uh, Basically, we want to find the identified uh, responder and non-responder for the high carb diet or high fat responder. And then uh, the second aim is to uh, investigate the gut microbiome in personal response. And we uh, did find that for, div, uh, uh, for high fat and high carb diet, there's a responder and non-responder in both directions. And for the microbiome, we did, find, did find that different people respond very differently to this high carb and high fat diet. And uh, then uh, this is a result from different uh, species and uh, generous level in response to high carb and high fat diet. But finally, we found that the, the specific uh, principal component of the gut microbiome uh, interact with the diet fat, diet carbohydrate, which means diet carbohydrate driven the association of, of uh, gut microbiome with glycemic trait and we validated in another independent cohort only in the high carb diet, the uh, diet, the, the microbiome sen carbohydrate sensitive score associated with glycemic index. And uh, then we also find some uh, evidence for the functional metabolism and the KO work. And eventually we uh, want to, using the large scale uh, 
uh, Michael Bond co-hosted to investigate the relationship of diet and Michael Bond with human health. So we form initiated this first uh, West Layer Gut project. Called, this is the first Michael Bond cohort consortium in China involving over thirty thousand people uh, in China. So we want to uh, we are, we are just starting this uh, co consortium and uh, and the collaboration work. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Yu Sheng, uh, for a wonderful talk.